the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin Pedro Pascal! It's something that uh, this, this very, very hardened, armored character had to uh, soften to, in, in a sense, kind of discover his own self and his own heart through his relationship with the child. And as audience members, the same thing kind of happens to us, I think. For it to kind of reflect so much human experience um, from someone that doesn't look like a human being, frankly, um, neither of them really, it's pretty damn smart. I'm trying to draw from all over Star Wars. Part of what, what allowed us to make The Mandalorian in the amount of time that we did uh, and turn it around within a year and get it to air was that we innovated a new technology by using a video wall that using essentially game engine technology to move as the camera moves. And so we're able to have in-camera set extensions by designing the sets ahead of time. And what's in the foreground, I think most people assume a lot of that CGI. We do that with animatronics and with uh, prop builders, and that's always been the secret of Star Wars, too, is mixing real and fake in the right way. Please put your hands together for Giancarlo Esposito. To be a part of this franchise, I think it took me by surprise. I never realized. Um, I saw the original movies. When John said to me that you were, you were going to fly your own TIE fighter, I went, oh, you got to be kidding me. That child comes back, that child who grew up too fast, that child who was always good at what he did, that child who was voracious, had a voracious appetite for um, fantasy. And now here I am all these years later being that child again and understanding what it means to some other child who's sitting out there who doesn't have that same opportunity yet, um, really rocks my world. Hi. You guys didn't think you were gonna get rid of me that easily, did you? I prepared in so many ways to play this character in live action. I memorized, I, I made sure that I knew my backstory, all of these things. It never occurred to me that I had never stopped to question how she moved and what her face did. And all of a sudden, you know, a, a few days before filming, I, I started questioning everything. And um, thankfully, Bryce Dallas Howard was there, and, and she held my hand through that process, and we found her eventually. How's my credit around here? And you come here, little one. Have you been taking good care of him? It's something I've always wanted to do, be a director, and I've been directing since 93, so none of it's new for me. You know, the challenge in The Mandalorian, or with anything, is really just to do good work. So I couldn't put a quantitative kind of price on it, really. I've been dragging you, Mandalorian. Mr. Tamuera Morrison! <laughs> to be getting the phone call to come back 22 years later and getting that phone call, uh, I was four hours early for the meeting. I saw concept drawings on the wall, but still, I could tell they were me, but still I didn't want to believe it. And I didn't want to believe it until I heard from John uh, and what they were outlining, and they yeah, were going to bring you back as Boba Fett, you're going to reappear in The Mandalorian. It was phenomenal. Speak freely. There's a pacing to this that just feels like we're constantly taking nice deep breaths and settling. We can really sit down and ask John and ask Dave innumerable questions and they are so happy to share. Really yeah, tremendous. It's very freeing as an actor to have that support from the creator. I mean, these characters mean so much to Dave and for so many years that there was, I felt pressure at the at start. Coming from animation actually doesn't really feel like a challenge, it feels like a benefit.